So now we're going to do the dock worker, and I'm just going to start with this base mesh here. So I go ahead and delete all the accessories off, do a quick mirror and weld on his face in case he wasn't symmetrical. Now this guy is going to be asymmetrical. I'm going to give him a cigar out one side of his mouth and kind of bust his nose up a little bit and shrink one of his eyes and give him a little lopsided grin. Uh, but for the most part, I'm going to keep him symmetrical up until I get to the point where it's easy enough for me to break symmetry towards the end and save me some time in sculpting. Now you could you could sculpt this thing completely asymmetrically if you're so inclined. I personally wouldn't spend time doing that, but uh, I'm putting some teeth in him. So just uh, appended a or inserted a cube here, and I'm just trying to test out what kind of mouth I'm going for, and if I want to add a mustache here, just kind of feeling out how he'd look with a little goatee and some buck teeth in there, and he's gonna be he's gonna be another elderly gentleman, a little rough, little wind wind blown, wrinkled, and little thinner, a little more gaunt, and he's obviously caricatured. He's got quite the nose on him and big mouse ears and we're going to move his head forward a little bit, transpose and mask and give him a big Adam's apple and kind of crane it, crane his neck, maybe weaken his jaw and his chin. And again, making him a little more gaunt, making his cheekbones a little more hollow, nose is bigger. Um, the body, I know I'm probably going to end up covering up a lot, so I don't I don't think I spend a whole lot of time doing that stuff, but just putting in the interesting wrinkles where I think they're going to go. And But again, it's mostly just clay brush, standard brush, move brush. Clay brush, standard brush, move brush. Clay brush, standard brush, move brush. That's all this is. And then thinking, okay, actually I should go ahead and do a little bit more expression and, you know. Guy got rid of his beard because I'm going to put that in much later. I kind of want to keep his face and make sure that I don't, I'm not obscuring anatomy that's going to throw me off with a beard right now. I go ahead and do his anatomy first and then cover it up with a beard once I know that his anatomy is correct. Um, you know, right off the bat, you know, when you're smiling, you're going to kind of bunch up your cheeks. So he's going to look weird until I go ahead and add that mass above his cheeks. And then you'll see, oh, there we go. Okay, right there. That feels a lot better. Because, you know, you, you can... You can sit here and sculpt something, and it's not until you, you know, get some reference or study anatomy, I guess, but certainly get some reference of an old guy smiling, for sure, and then you'll realize that, oh, wait, okay, number one, when you smile, you bunch up a lot of your cheeks underneath your eyes, and you compress your eyes, and then, you're smi and then your, your whole face kind of settles into a much more natural pose. You, people won't look at it and go, yeah, there's something off about that face, you know, it's kind of weird. And uh, you know, while I'm doing this, I'm also going to be playing around like I did there with like, well, what if I kind of push the jaws out or the chin up, and is that going to be anything interesting? Does anybody anything catch my eye? Is like, ooh, that's got a that's kind of got a cool. That kind of adds a little bit to his personality that I like. And this guy's not going to be stern. He's going to be the opposite of the Vatican Cardinal. He's going to be a uh, friendly dock worker. But again, like I said, you can't miss when you're using standard brush, clay brush, and move brush when you start getting into, and you'll see this a lot on ZBrush Central, where, you know, you'll you'll see a lot of alien, demon, wrinkly, old creature work because, you know, when you're using these brushes, it lends itself very nicely to that type of thing. So I figured we'll start there. Now, again, like I said in the previous video, you can create anything in ZBrush. And by that, I do mean anything. I can't think of anything you can't create in ZBrush. Um, there might be tools that you might prefer more, depending on what you're trying to create, but when you get right down to it, it's a very incredibly powerful creation tool. And if you go watch my YouTube channel, I get into some other programs that, you know, I, I'm not uh, I'm not ZBrush exclusive. I'll, I'll use the best tool that I think for the job, um, but for when it comes to getting my ideas out quickly, that's what I use ZBrush for. It's about getting in there and kind of making sure that what I want or what I'm going for is kind of blocked out before I spend the time 
possibly in another program or within ZBrush and cleaning up and going going to the next step. I'm going to make sure that I get it blocked out first. This is where you kind of break symmetry and do uh, wrinkles across the midline and change up the two sides of his face, but I waited until he was kind of blocked in before I went and did that so I wouldn't have to spend a lot of time re-sculpting an eyeball on one side and a nostril on the other side. And he figured his face was just really, really wanted a cigar to chomp on on one side. So, And again, make his teeth asymmetrical. He's not a, he's not a tooth model or a, you know, a magazine model with perfectly awesome teeth. He's a dock worker who's chomps on cigars, so his teeth are going to be a little bit crooked. And again, no mouth bag. We'll get into mouth bags when we get into project-oriented stuff where it's like, okay, now we need to make a mouth bag for this character because he's going to be animated and all that good stuff. And we'll get to there. We'll get to that stuff. Um, but for now, it's, again, just getting your idea out quickly and making sure. Is this the character we want? Yes? Okay. Now let's make him for sure. And then this is where, okay, now i got his face how I like it. Um, wasn't quite sure if that was working for me, so I gave him a goatee and I was like, eh, not really feeling it. So I went back and just gave him the tactical turtleneck and the little woolen cap. Blocked that stuff in while I'm looking. And so by doing that, it kind of gives me time to think and feel out the character a little bit more. You know, kind of distract myself with something else. And then I go ahead and use slice to get a polygroup. And I slice off his cap into one subtool and his shirt into another and then get rid of his head and his ears and then now I've got a cap to sculpt with. Now and again part two will be all about accessory mesh creation and there's a ton of ways to do that so don't think I'm cheating you or I'm not getting into that enough it's because it's coming up and it will be a lot of stuff but for now again it's getting your idea out quickly clay brush, standard brush, move brush. How much can you get done with those those few tools And looking at this now, he's kind of a classy um, steamship era <laughs> dock worker. Little vest on. Probably should have gone for maybe some overalls or something, but I don't know. It's it's what I went with, so I guess I'll stick with it. But again, it was took me ten minutes to make that shirt, so it's not like if I have to go and redo it, it's going to be a deal breaker. I'm going to feel bad or hate myself or quit my job because I have to go back and spend another ten minutes giving him another shirt, you know. Now, if I had spent two days making a beautiful shirt that nobody liked, then, then I'd be mad at myself probably more than anything. But, you know, that's why you get it in quick and make sure it's what you want and it's what works and it's what people like. And I decided to give him a little bit of scruff and a little bit of scrubble. So that's basically I sprayed on an alpha. So clay brush or standard brush, I forget which, but you can just turn your stroke to spray and then put on your little spray dot alpha and just kind of spray on and drop your Z intensity down. And we'll get more into alphas and st stroke types when we get into part two of the ZBrush stuff. And then a little bit of snake hook along the bottom to kind of break up that those little hairs. And again, fiber mesh, you could use that. It's easy enough. Just mask it and turn on fiber mesh and comb him out some whiskers. But again, this is easy too and it gives me as much control as I need to get the idea onto, not on a paper, but that kind of th same thing where get it, get it out. And again, just indicating the cloth type. Depending on how fine you make your wrinkles or how many wrinkles or how those wrinkles hang on your object will tell a lot as to what it's made of. And again, just adding, you get, you know, big, big basic creases on the turtle neck and the sweater gives it a nice thick feel and then you add these little ribbing and it, you can you know exactly what type of cloth this is there's no question and here's where I forget that how these things are made so I'm like wait that doesn't feel right so then I try this and I think this is right and this is probably where I should have gone and got some reference like woolen cap reference but I guess I'm too lazy to open a chrome tab and google something don't be like me look it up But get his cloth in there, and then this I got a little fancier with these buttons than I did in the cardinal buttons, and I actually bring in some buttons and kind of sculpt some wrinkles around the actual smashed, squashed, transposed sphere buttons. But he was he was a fun one to do, and fast. <laughs> 